Now at 11, tire slashers are caught on camera in a Portland neighborhood. A local teen Jeopardy champion helps local doctors in the fight against cancer. And this is in honor of a Jeopardy host, Alex Trebek, a man who's been a role model for me for my whole life. Friends and family remember the pioneering chairwoman of Columbia Sportswear, Gert Boyle. She knew how to be tough and it made the rest of us get better. And later, the new way hackers are getting access to your smart speakers. But let's begin with that developing news of a costly crime spree in southeast Portland. And about half a dozen people waking up to find their tires had been slashed. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Haggerty. And I'm Laurel Porter. Thankfully, detectives have some help from some home security footage that shows the suspects in action. KGW's Mike Benner has the story. It was right up high here where the hole was. You wouldn't know it at first glance, but this tire on Jason Richards 2010 Toyota Tacoma is a replacement tire. I saw my truck sitting weird. I figured something was wrong. And sure enough, I walk around the side and it's completely, completely flat. See, this is where I normally park. Jason made the discovery Saturday morning. It appears somebody slashed one of his tires while his truck was parked on Southeast Market near 50th. They're bored or they're just pissed off at the world and, you know, want to inflict you know, damage and pain and suffering, whatever, I don't know. And Jason isn't the only one scratching his head. A bunch of people woke up Saturday to damaged tires. In fact, a home security camera captured several people walking along Southeast 49th, slashing tires along the way. That 2003 Volkswagen Beetle the suspects approach belongs to a woman who's lived in the neighborhood for only a year. From the video, it looks like these guys are pretty young. And I just feel a sadness in the world that People are so unhappy in their own lives and feeling so unloved. This compassionate woman did not want to share her name, but says the tire slashed was one of four new ones she bought just two months ago. It's very upsetting. It feels scary. You know, you don't want these things happening in your neighborhood. I'm very upset. I just had a lot of medical bills. I don't really have the extra money to rebuy a tire. I didn't even know how I was going to deal with it, how I was going to get the tire changed or anything. And again, I say it's a great neighborhood because one of my neighbors came and changed my tire for me. Out in the street. That neighbor was Jason Richard. After all, if anybody knows what she's going through, it's him. They're both hoping somebody recognizes the shadowy figures in this video and contacts police. In the meantime, I'll look into and invest in a dash cam and maybe cameras for the house. Um, just because, again, it's not the first time it's happened. All right, Jason Richard has lived in the neighborhood for about seven years. He's had his tires slashed before, as he just alluded to. As far as this most recent case, though, there appear to be about a half dozen victims. Authorities fear there may be even more who have not reported the crime. You're asked to give police a call if your tires were slashed or if you know anything about this case. Back to you. That's so maddening. Really feel for those victims. Thank you, Mike. Now to get you caught up on tonight's other headlines. One person is in the hospital after they got trapped underneath a car in southeast Portland. Police say the person was in an unmarked crosswalk when a driver hit them. Then their car was hit from behind by a van, pushing it even further, trapping the pedestrian. The person has serious injuries, but is expected to survive. And another pedestrian has critical injuries after getting hit by a car in Beaverton. Thank you to Tamara Pfeiffer for sending in this video to us. Police tell us that the person who was hit was crossing 170th in the middle of the road. The driver did not see them, but stayed on the scene and is cooperating with the investigation. A Head Start bus full of children was part of a chain reaction crash near McMinnville this evening. It happened on Highway 18 near Durham Lane. Police say one vehicle was trying to cross the highway when they hit a minivan. It then spun into the other lane and was hit by the bus. None of the children was hurt, but three other people had to go to the hospital. Your ballots are due tomorrow for this month's election. You can find a complete voter's guide on KGW.com right now. So in Oregon, you must drop them off at a ballot box by tomorrow at 8 p.m. That is if you haven't already mailed it. In Washington, you still can mail in your vote and it will be counted as long as it is postmarked by tomorrow. It's life and you can't live in the past. Yesterday is never going to come around again. So you better enjoy today. Friends, family, and a generation of people inspired by local icon Gert Boyle are sharing their memories of the Columbia Sportswear Chairwoman. Columbia announced yesterday that Boyle had died at the age of 95. 
Group Oil was known not only for her efforts to turn Columbia into the thriving company it is today, but for her no-nonsense management and her sense of humor. Pat Doris reports. I don't take myself very seriously. Yeah. When Group Oil spent time in the KGW carpool with our Brenda Braxton just a year ago at the age of 94, she talked about staying busy. It's an interesting life, and I honestly could not think of myself is staying home mm. with a bunch of old people. She rarely stayed home. In fact, she kept an office at the Columbia corporate headquarters and was a regular here until just two months ago when she began to slow down. Her life and business began in 1970 when her husband, Neil, had a sudden and deadly heart attack. He had run the hat company that Gert's father had started when he brought the family to Portland as they fled the Nazis in Germany in the late 1930s. Suddenly, Gert and her son, Tim, a senior in college, were left to run that company. A secretary knew a lot more than I did. Everybody else knew more than I did because I didn't know anything. And I'd say, hey, you know, you got to teach me this. And they'd say, well, we're busy. We don't have time. So I cleaned house. Fighting for survival, Gert Boyle discovered a steel inner strength that helped her and Columbia survive. Today, Tim Boyle said it was not an act. Yes, I mean, she, she uh, took on the um, persona of being a tough business person, which was not easy for her since she didn't really know what a tough business person was. But she knew how to be tough, and, and um, you know, it, it made the rest of us um, get better. Little by little, they did better. In a world of rugged individuals, in the mid-1980s, they launched the Tough Mother series of advertising, featuring Gert as the toughest mother around. Mother Gert Boyle. It was a huge success. Make her a tough mother, Jean. Hi, I'm Gert Boyle, chairman of Columbia Sportswear. My son, Tim. With Boyle taking part as Tim wore the company coats through all sorts of weather-related abuse. Columbia also began to diversify. When we were only in the ski business, it was like playing poker with the Lord, and you know who's going to win. If it didn't snow, you just didn't have anything. But you can't allow a company to become stagnant like that. As the years passed, Columbia grew, went public, bought other brands, and thrived. Today it does more than $3 billion in sales in 90 countries around the world and has 1,500 employees in the greater Portland area. <laughs> Columbia Sportswear made Gert Boyle a wealthy woman and she gave generously, including $100 million to the Night Cancer Challenge. And we have much more on Gert's life and legacy online. That includes an entire playlist of the many features and stories we've told about her over the years. Look for that on our KGW YouTube channel. You can also find more at KGW.com and on our social media pages. You probably heard that Pat mentioned there that Gert Boyle gave generously to the Knight Cancer Institute. Well, today, OHSU got another generous donation for cancer research from a Jeopardy champion. We're talking about Avi Gupta. He's the Catlin Gable grad who won the Jeopardy team tournament back in June. As KGW's Catherine Cook reports, he hopes his giving will inspire others to do the same. In a moment akin to final Jeopardy, Avi Gupta took pen in hand and went for it. The winning question here, a $10,314 donation to OHSU's Knight Cancer Institute. And this is in honor of a Jeopardy host, Alex Trebek, a man who's been a role model for me for my whole life and someone who I had the fortune to work with uh, through my participation in the Jeopardy Teen Tournament. $100,000. This past June, the Catlin Gable grad won the Jeopardy Teen Tournament and the $100,000 grand prize. This check is part of his winnings. A surgery was performed. While Trebek battles pancreatic cancer, there are countless others fighting for their lives. Avi hopes his donation, a nod to the mathematical constant pi, will promote research for early detection. Everyone knows someone or has been affected by cancer in some way. And I believe firmly, after seeing the research that's underway here at OHSU and across the country and across the world, that our scientists are winning this battle against cancer. 
We just need to help them do more. What a remarkable young man and what a, what a great gesture and we hope that inspires lots and lots more people. Dr. Brian Drucker is director of the Knight Cancer Institute. He and his wife were so inspired by Avi's donation, they pledged to match it. A true daily double. Drucker hopes others will donate whatever they can to make a difference. He thinks of the Knight Cancer Challenge that raised $500 million through 10,000 individual donors. There were bake sales, lemonade stands. My daughter donated $16. Those are the people that inspire all of us to give small amounts and it all starts to add up. With each contribution, donors are encouraged to document their giving with the hashtag inspired by to recognize who they're donating in honor of. So I really hope that other young people, especially, will join me in supporting this cause. You know, we are the social media generation. You can count Dr. Drucker in. I'm going to hashtag inspired by and putting Avi Gupta because he is absolutely an inspiration. Aww. It's great to see Avi again. Right now, he is a freshman at Columbia University and home on fall break. And if you want to make a donation to the Knight Cancer Institute, we've posted a link for the Inspired By campaign. Just head to KGW.com. Keep an eye on Avi. Keep an eye on Avi. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> let's see what he does next. Is he, man, he's a cool kid. Yeah. It's going to be fun to watch him over the years. He is remarkable, and I hope he does inspire so many other Me people. Too. Thank you, Catherine, for that story.